If you ask people what type of Saab would you buy, they'd say one with jets, wings and guns. But let's face it, you're not going to get finance over five years for that, and it's just not practical. So that brings us on to load space, and this, the new 95 Aero Estate. Saab claimed that it's built with an eye to practicality before image, and I agree. I'd much rather have a ravishing little roadster any day, but give it its due, it seems to be a little bit sporty, with the low chassis, a front chin spoiler, contoured side sills, and these Wicked Boy Racer 17-inch alloy wheels. So to the important bit now, you just drop your kids off at school and you're on your way back home for a nice cup of coffee with the girlies. But you need to make a stop off at the supermarket. And the all important question is, how much can we get in here? I've got my friend here, Gary. Come on, Gary, give us a hand. Let's bring these trolleys around here. Look at this, watch. Lift this up. Hey, out comes your little tray there. Let's stack it up on there then, Gary. I'm not very good at packing, am I, Gary? No. <sighs> Thank you, Gary. You're a star. See ya. The 95 Aero has a 2.3 litre turbocharged engine, which can deliver 230 brake horsepower, which is more than enough to get you from the car park to your front drive with a full load. For me, Saab will always be associated with very natural people. The type that spend their Sunday afternoons putting their stuff into recycling bins, like vegans. So needless to say, the 95 feels cautious and safe on the road. But put your foot down and you're in for a surprise. From rest to 60 miles per hour, it takes this family estate just 6.5 seconds. That's more than enough to make your Birkenstocks curl. That's down to the Saab overboost function, which gives you more power to accelerate. That's all good and well when you're tearing down the high street for that hair appointment, girls. But what about trying to back this into your drive when it's full of shopping, the kids and Fido? On those long family holidays or even day trips, I think that the Saab will prove to be successful. The sport chassis is rigid enough to cope with all that extra power and I think it handles the bends rather well. What's more is the manual traction control comes as standard. The only criticism is that over long distances the drive isn't perhaps as involving as a driver may want. That's the long-winded way of saying it's a little bit boring, but whoever said practicality had to be exciting. Inside it's functional, grey and rather boring. The driving position is comfortable though and the leather seats, well they're quite nice but you do have to pay extra for them. The centre console here, well, it's grey and it's dull, but for a few extra quid, you could go for that wooden finish. And as you would expect, it's got a great in-car stereo system and more airbags and side impact bars than you can shake a stick at. At a shade under 24,000 for the 2-litre engine version and just under 27,000 for the 2.3-litre, it competes very well against the likes of Volvo and BMW. And they also last a long time, which is probably why they don't evoke much excitement. There are still many old ones on the road today. Now, if I had to choose between the Saab or maybe even one of its competitors, the Volvo, or a Subaru Legacy, which has 4x4 and is a little bit cheaper, I still would go for the Saab 95. As a family estate, it has a wonderful drive and I think it looks fantastic too. But then I haven't got a family, I'm not practical, and I'd probably go for something a little bit smaller, faster and a lot more fun.